Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another Under the Microscope Under the Microscope session with me. I'm Steve from OET Online. It's just gone uh, 5 p.m. here in Brisbane on the east coast of Australia. Uh, it's the 14th of June, and I hope this finds you well. Uh, welcome to our live participants, and a shout out to you if you're watching the video. All right, tell me where you're from and what time it is in your region. I can see lots of people in the chat, lots of people on YouTube, lots of people on Facebook. So just uh, let's do a little warm up and tell me where you are. We have Sylvia in Italy. Hello to Italy. Uh, where else have we got? Hello to Hadra in South Africa. Hello to Bangladesh. Where else have we got? Let's have a look at our Facebook crowd. Yeah, Finds you well. Uh, Let's well, just turn that line. down. Let's have a look at our. Hello to Zambia in the UK. Ireland is here, 8 a.m. in the morning. Very good morning to you over there. Hello to India. And Dubai is here, New Zealand, Ghana, Sri Lanka. Uh, Oman as well, Turkey, hello. Hello in Botswana as well. There's a flag there that I can't recognize. Hello to Pakistan. Spain is here. Excellent. All right. Got a great crowd. Hello to Somalia over there as well. Philippines, welcome. Um, hello to South Korea and the UAE. Um, all right. Let's get cracking, everyone. We've got a lot to do. It's great to see everyone here. So look, today we're going to talk about a very difficult part of the exam, listening. When I say difficult, difficult to achieve that required score for some people. You know, it can be a challenging part. Uh, we all know with OET, 70% success rate is what you need to get a B. So it's quite a high challenge. It's not 50%, it's 70%. Um, hence, you need to be doing well. Um, so today we're going to focus on listing part A, which I think forms the bedrock of listing because it's 24 marks out of 42. So it's over 50% of your mark. You need to do well. All right. Before I go any further, I can see some people. Look here, Dylan's here and succeeded. Love to see here success. Shout out your success if you passed OET. Um, great to help people on the journey. All right, I'm going to bring up my PowerPoint, everyone. And we're going to look at, you know, the thing about you are doing a list exam, yes, but you're doing a lot more than just listening. You know, it comes under the banner of listening, but actually other aspects of language are embedded and tested as well, not the least your ability to read uh, and also your ability to spell in listing part A. So it is a bit of a combination of language skills you need. Um, so you need to do everything possible to get that score. And we are going to put part A under the microscope, everyone. We're going to analyze it. Um, but just quickly about us, if you don't know about OET Online, doesn't matter what your profession, we are officially endorsed for all 12 professions. We're an all-star and a premium preparation provider. And we just recently celebrated 15 years of online delivery. So we've been here for a little while. Uh, if you want to study with us, check out our free taster course. There's a web address there, everyone. Check it out. Um, we've got a free taster course. You can find out how it works. Lots of great samples, gives you a feel. And if you're interested, you can study with us. All right, we are into listening, everyone. Listing part A. Questions welcome as we go. So this is going to be about a 30-minute session, everyone. So strategies. Oh, I'm just going to go through these, and we'll talk about them in um, increasing detail as we go along. 
For number one, you're given 30 seconds um, prior to the commencement of the audio. Um, so you want to use that time, that 30 seconds, to read ahead and prepare for the task. Um, if you don't, it will be hard to keep up and you will likely miss many gaps. Now, that doesn't matter if how good your English is. If you haven't prepped for the task, it's difficult to read and listen at the same time. So what you do before the audio commences, that's your preparation, your foundation. You should be reading the notes and underlining important words. And I hear you say, which words? Well, the words either side of the gap, definitely the most important. Uh, on the left-hand side, as we'll see soon, there are subheadings, um, which uh, helps you understand the structure of the consultation. What aspect are they talking about? Um, and that's important because that just gives you a bit of a guide there so you can understand the structure. And also remember the health professional is leading the role play. So they provide the structure. So you must pay attention to what the health professional says um, and listen to their questions because quite often the gaps that you need are answers to those questions. Standard structure is as follows, a little bit of medical history brought the patient to see the uh, health professional that day, their current symptoms, perhaps treatment they've received, medication, side effects is important, perhaps initial medication didn't work, any procedures they've undergone, uh, prevention strategies to stop the condition worsening, pretty standard health consultation communication. So it's a pretty stable structure that you can rely on, but it will vary from case to case. What you need to do um, is follow the gaps, but the good news is these gaps follow that sequence of the recording. So you just work your way through and 95% of your answers comes from the patient. Um, so you have to, we'll talk about it again, but you've really got to concentrate quite intensely um, and focus on what that patient says. Uh, you're going to use some prediction skills to help you anticipate the type of word that may come in a gap. For example, is it going to be a symptom, a noun? Will it be a past illness, a medical condition? Perhaps it's the medication that they're taking or the side effects associated with that medication or a particular procedure. But by reading ahead, with the sentence, you can predict what's coming, and that will help you know how to which words will fit into certain gaps. They need to fit, and they need to fit grammatically. Now, you will need good grammatical awareness, um, and you can predict if your answer is going to be a noun, a verb, or an adjective by the associated words around the gap. All of these things help you get listen and hear the right answer and then also ensure that you put it in the correct grammatical words. So that's just the basics. Now, this page is pretty important for me, uh, and I want to make sure everyone's up to date with this, and you're welcome to ask any questions here. So this is assessment. How, how do you get marks? Well, number one, UK and US speaking or spelling, that should say, that's a bit of a typo. UK and US uh, spelling, that should be. Just type that in correctly. UK and US spelling accepted, no problem there. Um, but a few little tips here, everyone. Don't write too much, right? Only write what answers the question, right? And what answers the question is direct, direct words stated by mainly the patient. If you're putting in extra words, uh, it's likely to create an incorrect answer. So, for example, if you wrote the correct word, but then you added information that wasn't part of the communication, wasn't what the patient said, you will not get the point. So be careful of that. 
don't add extra information. You need to listen and put exactly what the patient has said. Um, you also must provide enough correct information to be given a mark. So there's no half marks. No half marks are given. Look at this scaly pink rash. Perhaps in your answer, you only put pink rash, but you left out the scaly, right? That may not get you a mark because it, that word scaly will be an important descriptive element of the rash. Severe pain. In this case, pain alone may not get you that point. You need to describe the nature or the severity of the pain. So, you know, there isn't a half point because you've got half the answer. You need to get the whole answer. Um, common abbreviations, symbols, synonyms are not really accepted um, unless, unless these abbreviations were used by the patient. So if the patient says, I've had an ultrasound before, and you write US, you won't get that mark. You need to write ultrasound. The patient said, I've, I've been experiencing shortness of breath, and you put SOB. No, you need to write shortness of breath. The bottom line is you need to write what you hear. I'll say it again. You need to write what you hear. Challenging, yes. Requires concentration, yes. But that is the nature of the exam. Crystal clear, everyone. Are we good with that? Um, and I'll check your spelling soon when we do our task. Um, you need to write as clearly as possible because if the assessor cannot read your writing, you will not get a mark. I mean, look at this. This sentence was written. We can't read all those words. It's with this fat, yeah, it's a bit confusing. If the examiners aren't going to make extra effort to decipher what you wrote. So you need to practice that. All right. Um, spelling errors of common words are not accepted. Right. So if you spell the word vegetables with an I, you won't get the mark there, everyone. Spell it with the E. If you spell a common health condition, Alzheimer's, right, Alzheimer's disease, if you drop it, if you don't spell it correctly, even if you miss the apostrophe, you well may not get that mark. Uh, aspirin, that's not spelled correctly in this example. We need to spell it aspirin. Paracetamol should be paracetamol. So one thing I really advise you to do in your preparation is work on your spelling. Right? It's an expectation that these common words you can spell correctly. Now, if they are on uncommon words or a complicated medication or you know certain minor errors, you may get that mark. But my advice to you is really work hard on your spelling skills. Uh, it's something you can train. Um, on our website, we've got lots of spelling worksheets. Um, but it's very important that you develop that skill because you don't want to lose unnecessary marks there. Um, grammar is another big one. Um, you need to apply correct grammar. So look at this sentence, works as a physiotherapy. Perhaps you were listening and you heard this word, but then you just put the wrong word form. Works as a physiotherapist, right? So if you put a the wrong form of the word, you won't get your answer. Pain in his joint, that means a singular joint. That may well be wrong because the pain, if the pain was in multiple joints and you wrote singular when it should have been plural, again, no mark, right? Health is deteriorated. Now that's ended in ED, that's not correct grammar, health is deteriorated, but perhaps the patient said my health is deteriorating. So if the if the uh, patient says deteriorating, but you change the word form into an ED, deteriorated, you will not get the mark. All right, that's the bad news, everyone. 
Uh, I wanted to make that really clear. It's tight assessment. It's an exam. You need to be well prepared. You need to know the rules. This is the rules um, currently. Uh, OD Centre have recently run some sessions for all of our teachers on the listening and reading assessment criteria. So this information is hot off the press and reflects the current exam as of 2023. All right, but if you can apply this, you're going to get a good score. All right, let's jump in. So uh, what is a good score? How much do we want? Um, well, I would say 10 out of 12 for part A is a good target score. Let me ask you all a question. Can you get 10 out of 12? Are you able to do that? Is that possible for you? How do you feel about that? Is that achievable? If you can, you are well on track because that means you'll get 20 out of 24 overall. If you're lower, that's okay. It's time and effort to, to reach that. Great thing about OET, you know it's on health-related topics, so you can keep your focus in that area and build vocabulary where required. Now, if you're brilliant like Chi Chi getting 12 out of 12, you're looking good there, Chi Chi. Yeah, very doable, I think, with practice. All right. So part A, you want to get 20 out of 24. Part B, I've set the benchmark pretty high. Five out of six is good. Um, because it's definitely easier, these multiple choice questions, than part C. Part C, 7 out of 12. Um, there's two papers, as you know, six points each. But this combination gives you 32 out of 42. 32 out of 42 will get you that score of 350. You might be able to do it with a little bit less, maybe 30, 31. But I like to say 32 um, as a good target because um, that gives you a little bit of leeway. So my suggestion to you when you're studying at home, keep a record of your scores every time you do a test, track your progress to see if you're um, improving step by step. All right, now question for everyone. We're going to do one task today, everyone. We're going to do one listing per day. And I'm going to play that in just a moment. But I have a question. We can see these men, Alexander the Great, Kublai Khan, Michelangelo, Benjamin Franklin, Isaac Newton. What do these men have in common? Can anyone tell me? What do these men have in common? It's a medical condition. Do you know what it is? It is a medical condition. Open your answer if you know. They have a medical condition, something that affects men often above 40. If you think you know it, type it in the chat. Scientists, well, yes, they probably are. There's a few scientists in there, definitely Marissa, but what's their medical condition? Um, Dementia, let's hope not LSD. <laughs> uh, a few people are going gout. Yes, gout is the answer. They all had gout. Now we're going to do a task on gout. You may know this one, but we're going to analyze it. But one thing I'd suggest, it says here, gout, according to the literature, gout is a metabolic disorder caused by um, uric acid building up and not being processed perhaps by the kidney, and there is a disposition and accumulation of salts in the joint, causing inflammation and pain. Not much fun. And we know gout, big toes, a big one, but various joints, shoulder, elbow, knee, ankle, and so on. But what I, the reason I'm showing you this is what I think you should definitely do in your own study is make sure you study um, build your range of lay terms, terms used by patients associated with mod common medical conditions, words for symptoms, word for treatment options, word for medication, words for side effects, words for procedures. If you're studying for Part A, 
do your research on all common medical conditions and make sure you're comfortable with that vocabulary. The more you build your vocabulary, particularly the not the technical jargon, we're not looking for that, we're looking for patient language. That's a really good preparation. And that's what makes OET special because the focus is narrow, not interested in general academic topics. Just look up common medical conditions. Granted, there are plenty of them, but that's your field. So um, a lot of times you'll be able to use your prior knowledge. It's like a refresh. Okay, here is our paper today, everyone. You hear a rheumatologist talking to a patient called Harry Davies, who suffers from gout and is attending for a medication review. For questions one to 12, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. That's what we need to do. Word or short phrase, probably from the patient. Let's quickly check it out, everyone. On our left, we have medical history. Suffers from gout. Had his first serious attack while on holidays. Pain in his, okay. Here's our first clue. Pain in his, so it's gonna be somewhere, isn't it? So I would underline these words accompanied by swelling, but pain in his, it will be a noun, it will be a body part. Initially thought it was either, this is also gonna be a noun, something or something else. Had an idea what it might be. Possibly related to medication taken for, that's gonna be another medical condition. So already we know one will be a body part and then these will be conditions. So these will be nouns. So all these first words we've got, they'll all be nouns. Describes pain as something. Now it's the description of the pain. Now pain can be severe, pain can be mild, pain can be moderate. So now we know that this is going to be an adjective, right? And this is all in your 30 seconds just going through very quickly, knowing, reading, and utilizing that time to know what you're listening for. Was unable to, and we've got the preposition to. So now we know we need a verb to do something. So that grammar really informs us. Says the clinic initially suspected, well, you suspect something, and it's going to be a medical condition which is another noun, they, they suspected something, all right? So we've got a noun here. Before diagnosing gout, reports previously feeling similar pain after. Now, when we have a preposition, preposition also followed by a noun, but could also be the ing form, after something, but less intense self-resolving. So we're able to get a little bit of an idea by um, looking at these words and trying to predict what we'll hear. Then we go to treatment. Something not effective or something not effective. Well, that's going to be some kind of treatment that maybe it's could be a prevention, a conservative treatment, or I don't know. What do you reckon, everyone? I think it's going to be a noun. I'd be tempted to think it's a medication here. Culture scene caused something. This is going to be a noun. Perhaps, yeah, it caused something. Maybe it's a side effect. We will see. Something caused nausea. Now, we don't know about 10, but... It caused nausea, may have overdosed. Well, this must be a med because it's something you overdosed on, you would think. Um, and then something quite effective. Well, something that was effective. Again, it's going to be a noun. And then allopurinol caused something, probably a side effect going to be a noun because it's a medication so now you've got to do that at high speed but train yourself 
in 30 seconds just to start your prediction, get an idea what's coming. This will become second nature. And once you're good at it, you won't even have to do it all like I'm demonstrating here. It'll be intuitive, right? Because you don't have a lot of time. But engaging and reading uh, is very important. Okay, everyone, get your pen in hand. And I am going to play this for you. Pen in hand. And write down the numbers 1 to 12. And then I'm going to ask you to make notes. There, you probably can't see that paper. But I'm going to get you to take notes. And then we're going to check your scores and your spelling. Is everyone ready to go, everyone? Type in the chat box if you're ready. Um, you can just type in R for ready, everyone. If you're ready, just type in R. I'll give you a few seconds just to get yourself organized. And then I'm going to press play, everyone. Type in R for ready. We're getting some readies coming in now. Excellent. All right, if you're watching the video, I hope this is working for you as well. Facebook's ready. YouTube's ready. Good. All right, let's do this, everyone. Here we go. Mr. Uh, Davis, yeah. I understand your GP has referred you to me so that we can review the medications you're taking for your gout. That's right. So, um, tell me a bit about this gout. Uh, when did it start? Well, my first serious attack was last year. My wife and I were on holiday and I woke up one morning with a really bad pain in my left knee. Well, I never thought of gout, because I always assume that just happens somewhere like your big toe. And anyway, I'm only 40. I thought it was something only old people get. So anyway, it was all red and swollen, and I decided it must be an insect bite. But I couldn't think how that might have happened, you know, without me feeling something at the time. Or my wife suggested it might be something to do with the pills I take for my cholesterol. Uh, unlikely, I think. <laughs> hmm. But anyway, the pain didn't get any better. In fact, quite the opposite. I started to get frightened because I thought it might be a sign of something really serious. It was excruciating. So my wife thought I needed to get some help. So she phoned the local clinic and told them about my symptoms. They told her to bring me in. It was a good thing she was there. I was in too much pain to drive. I mean, I could only just manage to walk from the house to the car. <laughs> anyway, when we got there, the doctor took a look and said he wanted to take a blood sample. He said it might be an emergency because it looked as if it could be septicemia. Hmm. So then we got really frightened. But about an hour later, they came back and said, no, it wasn't, thankfully. But they thought I had gout. So actually, at that stage, we were quite relieved. Yeah, I can imagine. And the doctor asked if I'd ever felt anything like it before. Well, actually, then I remembered that in the winter, I play quite a bit of rugby and sometimes I'd get some soreness in the same place the day after. But... I just thought I'd sprained it or something, and it would go away after a couple of days. But this pain's much worse, and it comes even when I've been resting. I've had it quite a few times since my first attack. Right. So what have you been taking to deal with the pain? Well, at first the doctor at the clinic suggested I took some anti-inflammatories, but I can't say they made much difference. Mm. So when I got the next attack, I was at home, and I went to my GP. She suggested I took... Uh, I can't remember the name. A uh, col something? Uh, colchicine? That's the one. So that dealt with the pain better, but it gave me awful diarrhoea. Yeah. I'd never take it again. And then I had a really bad attack. I think the doctor had got to the stage where, you know, she was already giving me really powerful medicines to no effect. So she gave me liquid morphine to take. It made me feel quite sick, actually. Mm. And I was a little bit um, away with the fairies, you know. Mm walking around not quite knowing where I was. Right. Uh, did you try any other sort of treatment apart from the medications? Yes. My GP said I could try using an ice pack, and that did make a bit of difference, but you can't have it on all the time. So anyway, after that, she said, let's try um, 
allopurinol, uh, see how you get on with that. Hmm. So I started taking that, but I didn't get on with it. It gave me a skin rash. So I rang her up and she told me to stop taking it, that I'd better see a specialist. So here I am. <laughs> Is there anything more you can do? Well, I'm sure we can find something, maybe a combination. All right, there we have it, everyone. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is type in your answers for 1 to 12. And I'm going to check your spelling as we go. Hope you could manage it. Feel free to type in your answers as we go. So number one, had pain in his. Type it in, everyone. I'm going to look at your answers. Yep, first one pretty straightforward, answers coming in. Yep, lots of people saying left knee. It is left knee, well done. All right, number two, initially thought it was either. I'm going to check your spelling. Insect bite is coming through. An insect bite, yep. Spelling looking good so far. Now, an is optional. You don't have to say an. Insect bite is enough. Spelling no problem so far. Uh, someone answered red and swollen for number two, but that's a different topic. That's where um, we've already got swelling. You see, someone put red and swollen, but that's, I understand why that happened, but we already have swelling here. So that's not what we were looking for. Um, what about number three, possibly related to medication taken for? A lot of people are writing cholesterol. Well done. It is cholesterol. Spelling looking good so far. You guys are good. We get a little bit tougher in a minute. Describes as the pain as. Here's a hard spelling word. How was the pain described? Good, Naeem. Vel got it as well. Very well done if you could get this word. A bit tricky under pressure. Wow. There are lots of people pleased to see your level. There it is. Excruciating. Check your spelling. I can see nearly everyone's got that. Excellent. Uh, someone missed number three. That's okay, Marissa. Um, good to jump ahead in those situations. Now, uh, number five was unable to. Jobin, you got to work a little bit on your spelling there. Same with you, Sarah. Now, uh, walk, no. You can see some people giving pills for medication, no. I can see why you do it, though. Yep, unable to drive. A few people said walk because they did. That was a distractor. He had to walk to the car, but unable, but he could do it. Unable to drive, says the clinic initially suspected. What did they um, suspect? Check your spelling on that one. Septicemia says Zena and well spent. Ibrahim as well with US spelling. Maame also good. Yep, that was septicemia, UK or US accepted. Uh, reports, and that, that's expected that you could spell a word like this, so make sure you're comfortable with common medical terms. Um, reports previously feeling similar pain after, after what? Some sort of action. Oh, LSD, what's your I there? The E instead of I. 
Playing rugby, says Maggie. Yeah, everyone's going playing rugby. Looking good there. You could have said playing rugby or just rugby alone would be enough. Both good. Then we went on to treatment, everyone. Something not effective. What was not effective? Some type of medication. Rest. Ooh, name got it, but watch your spelling. This is a hard word to spell. Chanda got it. Early bird got it. Good. Anti-inflammatory. But, and look, everyone's saying anti-inflammatory. I've got to be honest with you. I'd be a bit worried about that. You, I think you could, ex you, if you put, I think you need this. So just be careful of that. Or if you're going to put, Otherwise, you've got to type it out like an anti. I think you've got to be careful with your grammar, everyone. If you're going to use a singular there, um, then you better put the article. Or if you use a plural, you don't need an article. But be careful of that. Uh, culture. Culture scene caused what? What did culture scene cause? We could predict that it was a symptom. Awful diarrhea, yes. And diarrhea alone would work, yes. You can mention awful, but diarrhea is enough. All diarrhea is awful. We know that. UK or US. Then something caused nausea. Now we can predict that's a medicine. We can predict that's a medicine. Something caused nausea. Need to get this one right. Morphine, liquid morphine's coming in. Yes. That is the answer. Morphine alone wouldn't be enough. You need to say liquid, but everyone's doing that. Terrific work, everyone. Uh, a reason to put morphine, no. You need to do definitely, and Betsy as well. So watch out for that. Morphine alone, unfortunately, wouldn't give you a mark. Um, and the next one, something was quite effective. What was quite effective? Well, pre is onto it. I'd accept ice packs with an S, yes, and also a singular. So in this case, an ice pack, but I would also accept ice packs because you probably use more than one. So plural there is okay. Uh, and allopurinol caused something. It's going to be cause, it will be a condition. What did it cause? It's a symptom we know. Ibrahim's onto it. Yep. Answers coming in. Skin rash. Article optional. A skin rash. There we go. All right, and we're done. What was your score, everyone? Type in your score. How did you go? Wasn't too bad, was it? A few tough words. Shows you what it's all about. Tough cholesterol, excretion, septicemia, under. And there were a few confusing ones where people put answers that was already in the text, which tells me um, unable to read it carefully. So that's a skill to work on. Getting some 11s, getting some 12s, great. If you're doing that, you are awesome. Gata says for number eight, what if we said NSAIDs? I would say no. I would say no, Gata, unfortunately. You need for listening, in this modern exam, you need to use the word that is said in the communication. So don't look for short forms. All right. Wow, people have done fabulously well. That's so pleasing to see. Um, a few lower scores, but don't worry if you scored lower. 
there is always time just to build, right? Maybe you're at the beginning of your journey. All right, I'm going to show you something, everyone. Now have a look at this. What I want you to do, especially if you're new or you're not quite getting the scores that you want, right? There are a lot of clues here. And what you really need to do when you're doing this type of exam, you've got to multitask everyone. So by that, I mean you need to read and listen at the same time. So uh, just as you were doing now, you were reading the words and listening. And I saw some people miss answers, which told me they weren't reading the script. They weren't following this thread. They were perhaps jumping from a section to a section to a section, but not reading in between. If you do that, if that's happening to you, you're going to have to work hard and build your skills because it's not going to help you get that high score you need, All right? Because you've got to follow the thread. And you've also, and, and that's just intense concentration. One of the biggest things you can do for yourself is develop um, really good concentration skills so you can follow the thread of communication and anticipate answers. The next thing you need to do is think about what you read and what you hear. For example, what you read in the text, it said accompanied by swelling, but you didn't hear that. What you heard was not swelling. You heard it was all red and swollen, right? So that's what was said, right? Some people I saw put the answer swollen. Yes, you heard the word swollen, but that was a synonym for swelling. That wasn't the answer. Possibly related to medication. What did you hear? Wife suggested it might have something to do with the pills. I saw some people put pills in as an answer, right? But that was a synonym for medication. So if you're following the thread, when you hear the word pills, you connect, ah, medication, then you know the answer's coming. Suspected septicemia. It looked as if it could be septicemia. That's what was said. Before diagnosing gout, they thought I had gout. Reported previously feeling similar pain. I remembered that he that he'd had something that I re remembered this. Remember that he'd had something, or remember that he'd had soreness in the same place, right? or something that made him get soreness in the same place, but remembered, reported previously. Not effective. What did the patient say? Can't say they made much difference, therefore not effective. Caused diarrhea, gave me diarrhea. Caused nausea, made me feel quite sick, quite effective. That did make a difference. Caused a skin rash, gave me a skin rash. All right, so if you're on the journey to get from a score below 10, I'd right, say you're getting the six, sevens, eights, and you need to get up. This is your key, everyone. You need to understand what you read. You have to make a bridge between what you read, which is medical, um, a medical summary, quite formal language, and what you hear which is patient language. If you can make that bridge, you won't repeat things in your answers. Is that clear, everyone? Does that make sense? Yeah, but like Emmanuel said, lost the track, easy to lose the track, but you won't lose the track if you're able to do this. Now, it is a serious skill, everyone. It's something that you've got to work on, but you've got to pick up on those clues. And I suggest to you all is to always read the transcripts in detail, right? Anytime you've done a paper. Afterward, make sure you read it in full so you can identify the difference between the formal notes taken by the health professional, which is the part A task, and informal spoken communication, which is language from the patient. That's what you need to do. There's transcripts like this, everyone. Always study the transcript after and know where the answer is 
and look at the associated language. All right, and we are done, everyone. So we are open for questions. Uh, Marissa says accent hard to understand. Yeah, look, you're going to get different accents, but good thing about OET, generally clear, that's just practice, Marissa, listening again and again and tuning yourself, tuning your ear. Uh, LSD says, would the audio be very fast? It's, it will be at a natural speed. They won't slow it down for you. Um, but that example there, I think, was a pretty good example. You really need to concentrate. Arisha says, where can we find the best material for listening and reading? Well, that's a, well, you know my opinion there. Where can you find the best material? Well, at OET Online, of course. Um, and I'll bring up our website for you there. Uh, this is our website, everyone. And as I said before, we have a free taster course. So the first thing you should do uh, is check out our free taster course, but just create an account on our website and go and have a look around. We have a huge amount of material to help you build your skills, uh, including our reading and listening library. Um, but there's many other things that you can do just generally as well, of course. I'm going to go back. Um, lots of great websites. Um, I think um, uh, have a look. OET Centre has a really good page they've developed on listening where they list a lot of different websites. We have our own internal lists, but TED Talks is good. Health Report is good. Anything by Norman Swan. There's heaps of good online stuff. Um, and I just think watching the news um, on a daily basis, that sort of stuff as well, medical programs, everything you do helps. Um, but yes, visit our website if you want a structured course because that can make a massive difference as well. And we have amazing courses for listening only, or you can do an all skills course. Um, and we have lectures twice a week for listening. So make sure you check it out on our website, everyone. This is our listening page here. We have virtual listening platinum, standard, or even just modules if you just want content there. But there's a huge range of resources. These are in Australian dollars, not US. So we try to keep it really cheap for everybody. Um, and we have a great team to guide you. Um, so I've just given that link. Marissa, I think you got it, didn't you? Make sure everyone, yeah, I dropped it in that chat. If I didn't drop it in, uh, here's that one. This is the one you're looking for. Check that. Visit our website there. Um, all right. Some people have got upcoming exams. Team's really here to help you. Um, right. Thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, have a great week. Keep up the fight. You're going to get there. And um, we'll see you in the next session. All right, all the best and good luck. Bye for now.